What's going on everybody? I want to bring you back a video on the VPN a little bit more in detail than I did last time. I kind of explained why you need a VPN, how to set up a VPN and security and all that. But let's go into exactly uh, how a VPN works, if it works and what's going on with it. So I'm going to go back into my VPN, which is Surfshark. And if you look here, I'm connected in Kazakhstan, right? So if you want to know if this is truly working, you go to your account. Let's go to Google, right? We're going to go to Google com and you're gonna wait for it to open and if you look up here it's in Kazakhstani right I don't know if that's really what they call it but yeah so it's in their language this is how you know that on your VPN your phone it's thinking that all the traffic coming from your IP address is coming out of Kazakhstan so when you go to Google it says hey there's an IP address from Kazakhstan we need to get it in the Kazakh platform and you can see the news exactly how they have it. I don't know how to say news in Kazakhstan, so I'm just gonna try to see if I find the icon that I recognize. Um, okay, yep, none of that. I'm just gonna type in news because no idea. If I go back to my VPN network, here's my VPN Surfshark, I'm gonna go to locations, and the reason I like Surfshark is because it actually has numerous, uh, it has more platforms, more servers um, in different countries and the amount of countries than other VPNs do. So what this means, static IP means that your IP address stays the same. So whenever you log in to any of these, you're going to have the same IP address every time you log in. Multi-hop, what this means is that your IP address is going to change. It's going to bounce from Germany to Hong Kong to India to the Netherlands. It's always going to be changing. For me, I like locations, right? So let's just go down and let's pick, um, let's pick Croatia, right? Here we go. Disconnecting from Kazakhstan, it's going to connect to Croatia, and boom, we're connected. Now, all my traffic, my IP address is coming out of Croatia. So if I go back to Google, right, here we go, Google, refresh. Now, we are in Croatia. I don't know what this means. I'm guessing it's Croatian for consent to our bullshit. Now that you understand how that works, we're in Croatia, this is what's happening. When you go to settings and you go down to protocols, what protocols are, I use WireGuard. There's these different ones, right? ICAV2, OpenVM, this is UDPs, TCPs. It's, it's safe because it's the protocols on how you are encrypted through the VPN. The WireGuard, which is the one that I use, has the minimal lines of code. It's the newest, it's the fastest, it's the greatest, and it double lays. So what that means is if my traffic coming out of out of my phone, my IP address is going to Croatia. Croatia goes through a server and then it overlays it through a, uh, somewhere probably like let's say the Netherlands. So it has it has an overlay um, routing system from the from the server through the Netherlands. So it's running my IP address, which is already a encrypted IP address through Croatia, and then that Croat and then that's running through another encryption through another country so you have double layer security and there's it's for safety people can't hack it they can't understand it because of the protocols that you're doing so if we go back here and we go I already explained static IP and multi hops you go to back to Surfshark now you're in Croatia so now I want to get into Tor browsers so what Tor browsers is is Tor is a system that was developed by uh, the United States Navy and what it was was for an anonymous communication and file dropping and sharing, whistleblowing for the U.S. government with foreign governments with complete anonymity, right? So completely anonymous. And this is the way that they use for counterintelligence, for counterinsurgency, all these different acts. The CIA uses it, all these other things. But they can't have this without being it open to the public. So now they have, this is called the deep web, the dark web. The deep web is anything that you cannot find on Google. So if you think of it like a um, like an iceberg, at the top of the iceberg is just the bare surface level. Anything from a regular browser, anything from a regular uh, search engine um, through your regular servers is going to be anything Google can find, regular search engines. That's all the top. That's just the bare minimum. Then you go into the deep web, which is stuff that's not on Google, that's blocked by certain countries. That's you're, you're getting a little bit deeper and delving into the areas where you have to have specific addresses to. And then you have the dark web, which is onion addresses. So dot onion is the Tor browser, the onion browser, which is created by the United States government. The onion browser have dot onion addresses. So if I go to my onion browser, which is here, the onion browser 
has its own levels of protocols and security. So if you look here, you have gold, silver, bronze. I use bronze because I use a VPN, so it has more security than, and this will keep it at a high uh, BPS, you know, bits per second. It'll keep it at a high uh, operating volume while I'm using the Onion browser. So I use that. And then over here, your traffic goes to three different parts of the world. So again, this is the bridge circuit that I use. Again, you're going to be taking this IP address through this server. That server is an overlay with this server, and it goes through three different parts of the world. So it's literally impossible to figure out where this is coming from. So here's a dot onion address, right? Copy link. I want to show you something. If I go to my regular browser and I type this link in, it's an onion link. Go. I can't open it. You're not going to be able to open it because you have to have an onion browser for the deep dark web. So now I'm going to go back to my onion browser, which is right here, networks, onion browser. Now with my onion browser, I'm going to paste this link and I'm going to go. So now this is the hidden wiki, right? This is a hidden wiki dot onion address. So here you can find anything you need. There's whistleblowing, financial services, commercial services. There's hitmen for hire. There's anonymity and security. Of course, there is the nasty dark spot of this, which is, uh, you know, there's illegal porn sites, there's uh, pretty nasty, gruesome stuff that will really fuck you up for life. I don't go into that shit because I'm not into all that. Dark nets of ver versions of popular sites. So all these, um, you know, these are the onion sites of popular websites. So what the onion sites are is the dot onion address means that it is, uh, you can't track who's on there, you can't track who uploads, you can't track what's going on. So that is what this is. If we go back, there is onion sites for uh, social media. There's onion sites for everything. So, all right, get me back over here. So now, look at this, drugs. Yes, this is real, 100% real. Let's say, you know, and I'm not doing this to show you how to do it. I'm just showing you what the onion, what deep dark web is. Um, so... If I go to drugs market, it's a dot onion address if you look up at the top of my browser. And sometimes if you're going through a country that blocks some of these, what you need to do is you need to go up here to the onion and then you can bridge configuration, uh, no bridges, you could do OBFS4, which this basically means that it's coming random. Your IP traffic is coming random. Um, and then there's Snowflake, which makes it look like a phone call, which basically masks your IP address and all your uh, metadata and makes it look like a phone call transcription going from this to that to this to that um, and then there's no bridges which if you don't need a bridge then you don't need it and then you can get custom bridges so new circuit for this site so this is a dark site right you can do you can buy lsd you can do buy all this shit buy it here and of course it takes cryptocurrency so you know you need to have cryptocurrency in order to buy this anonymously and then obviously Shipping would be to P.O. boxes or whatever you have to ship it to. Don't ever use your own um, address, obviously. Don't use your own information. You know, that's why everybody that is on the deep web, the dark web, or understands how, um, you know, electronic warfare goes, they always go by a code name or something because that's what you set up everything for. So that's just, just to show you what this is, what the dark web is. If we go back to Surfshark, if you look here, this is the VPN. So the reason I wanted to do this is so you understand that whatever traffic comes out of your IP address of your phone, of your computer, of your desktop, of whatever, it's going to be masked. It's going to be... So if you log into your bank account information and you do it from a regular browser, people can hack that easier than you would think. There's seven to eight-year-olds that know how to hack right now. If you know how to run lines of code, if you know how to do certain... I'm not going to say the words on here because it'll I'll be hit by the FBI or something... If you know how to do certain things electronically, you can hack and get into anybody's anything. And what people will do is they will take your credit card information, they'll sell it online on the dark web. Um, you can buy mag magnetized cards from, from point A, and you can buy the information from card users on point B. And the way they know what those are is because every, uh, every card has a BIN, which is a bank identification number. The BIN is how you know what's on the card because a lot of people will be like, well, hey, you know, how do you know they even have a balance on the card? Well, let's say you have a BIN, which is the bank identification number for a black card, a any of these cards that have unlimited, unlimited amounts. That's how you know because of the BIN, the first numbers on the card. And those get tracked, hacked, they get sold on the black market. 
So now you have a card that's magnetized. You have this bin, this bank identification number of this card that you bought from somebody. And all you need is a piece of gear that now magnetizes that bin identification number, all that information of that card to this card. And now you have full access to somebody's stuff. So that's, I don't even know why I got into all that, but this is why you need to have a VPN so people can't get your information. They can't get your, your card numbers because you go on Amazon, you go on target.com, all these different things that people can hack. And if you do it through a VPN, they can't hack you because it's they, you have to be able to have the encryption key. And when you, most VPNs, they use 249 bit, which basically means that they take every letter everything that you do and they completely scramble it a thousand million times and the only place that has it is the end route right the end route has that that encryption key to decrypt it and then send it through that server whatever it is so that's why this is extremely important to not be hacked to, for your security uh, you know to keep you anonymous to basically clear your footprint in the digital world